Tom Donnie here, gonna look real quick about fitting Weisco pistons. Um, the rings have an up on them, so just be aware of that. They do have a little up, and uh, they're tapered because they go in and out of the groove. So they have a taper to them. They're flat on the bottom, tapered on the top. You really can't get them in wrong, but uh, there is an up and down on the rings. Then a uh, reminder that the wrist pins are fitted to the pistons. Now I normally don't sell pistons out of sequence. So if you've got a set of three, they're all gonna be the same. But if you're changing out a piston sometime, wrist pin and piston are a set. Don't intermix them, all right? There's a real slight difference, about six ten thousandths difference between a few of them. Um, oil is your friend here. Get that old can of uh, oil out like on the Wizard of Oz and, and, and lube it everything up good. Inside here on these wrist pin holes, um, critical that they be oiled. Be sure to oil your bearing first and your pin oil in here. Then check fitment. Even though, you know, this is all high-grade uh, OEM spec tolerances, you still want to check, and these should fall under their own pressure, all right? You should not have to force them in and out, okay? There's just gravity will feed through there. It's not like the old ones where you got to, like the old Saab styles, you know, where you had to, had to have nine different sizes of the old split bearing. We've got one size, but the pin is fitted to the pin, so you be sure you keep an eye on that. And then, uh, again, oil, oil, oil. I've seen... Uh, some Vanolia pistons made out of the 2618 where it knocked the wrist pin boss out within 200 miles. I will guarantee you those were assembled dry. Um, you cannot assemble this stuff dry. You have to put lube on it. Be sure to check your rings in the block also for uh, a gap. Uh, depending upon what you've got, you're probably going to have 16 to maybe 20 thousandths on a on a three and a half to four thousandths clearance. If you get up in that five, six range, you're probably gonna have 24, 25 thousandths clearance. Um, the main thing is you have clearance. I don't think it's a problem having a little bit more. Definitely a problem if you don't have enough ring clearance. So be sure to stick your rings into the top of the block and check your ring gap. Then to oil up your, your um, bottom end here, this is what I use. I use a toilet scrubber, toilet bowl scrubber. Good, you can have one to clean it with too but uh, lube everything up really good. And when these things go together uh, with, the, with these keystone cut rings, um, you'll think you broke one. And sometimes people will take them back apart just to check. Uh, they just drop in that easy. And then here's the new Donnie rods that have the modern snowmobile jet ski bearing in them. And I tell you what, we've had great success with these so far. Um, they're just dynamite. There's the old style cages. And you know the old style cages were problematic at best, and then some of the remade ones have uh, grooves cut in the corners, which is actually counterproductive. Um, if you wanted to make them stronger, you would actually put an archway across, just like a door. Think of a doorway it has an arch that covers it up and supports that, and that's how you'd make that stronger. The problem with these two is high RPMs; they centrifugally lock because of the weight of the rollers, so they become problematic if you're going to run any kind of RPMs. And we're still seeing people with a lot of failures with these, uh, especially if you're racing and hard on them. So uh, this will solve all your woes. Uh, of course, the Weissco 4032 alloy is a great alloy for these pistons. But uh, just do your due diligence. Uh, when you've got the engine assembled, be sure to run a compression test. That's critical. Uh, we've got a lot of engines out there running around that have poor compressions that people have built, and there's just really no reason for that. You should bench check it before you ever put it into the car. I, ch I have a spec sheet on all my motors and we bench test them before we ever send them. In fact, there's one right there in the plastic crate that's uh, all been rebuilt and is ready to ship to the customer with compression already tested. So anyway, lube everything up. That's the main thing I want to get on this video is, you know, lube, you can lube your ring grooves, lube your piston real well. Before I drop this, you know, all into the crank and I use the zero gravity for that. That's pretty dang handy but lube the heck out of it. You can't put too much oil on it. You won't hurt a thing. And again, if you need pistons, we sure got them. Love to sell them to you. I think they're going to do a great job for everybody. And then, of course, we've got the new rod kits that, uh, and these are so close, we, we weigh them, and all the rods come balanced as a set. So I think that's pretty cool, too. Anyway, uh, Tom Donnie from Fort Dodge and Sturgis saying safe sobbing, and thanks for watching.